Swedish Globetrotter. <laughs> uh, this is going to be a little different vlog than the usual ones where I film in the summertime with my kayak and going on my trips around the world. This is a vlog where I am going to do some work as a filmer. We're going to broadcast downhill skiing event for 10 days. So it's going to be <laughs> lovely to do a vlog about this trip. And I'm also going to give you a, a vlog about the environment I am in. Town of Arvidsjaur and the ski village of Ternaby. And Ternaby is very famous for all the stars they have produced. And it's stars in the downhill skiing. And you're also going to see the harsh climate there is up really up north of Sweden like this This is Arvidsjaur in the north of Sweden. This is a camping spot and I can't imagine people living here in this condition. It's so cold and snowy. These small houses you see you can buy them it's very popular in sweden now these days you can buy them and then you can put your caravan close to it like this now i'm just taking a walk and look around the area where i'm living so tomorrow it's work day. Today it's more relaxing day. It was almost 700 kilometers from my hometown to come up here with my workmate, my colleague, driving all night. So we have all day today to prepare for the event that starts tomorrow. One of the most wintering, what do you say, most snowy part of Sweden province called Lapland. It's the biggest province in Sweden but uh, up here it can be over 30 below zero Celsius sometimes. You can imagine how they lived up here like 100 years ago. How did they manage it? How did they manage it to live up here like 100 years ago, 200 years ago? It's incredible. The roads was bad, no cars, just a sled and a horse. It's so impressive how people could survive up here. This is far away from Thailand. Where we're staying is on this camp Gielas, where our cabin is. And it's a very nice cabin, very fresh, very clean, very warm. I don't know what direction I'm going to go. Yes, I know now where I'm going. I looked at the map and it's not so far away to the town of Arvidsjaur. Arvidsjaur. Sounds like Arnold Schwarzenegger. Arvidsjaur. So let's go to the town of Arvidsjaur. See what they offer. <laughs> there we have a sign says city. Can go and take a cup of coffee somewhere maybe. This is nice. I've never been to Arvidsjaur. This is the first time. I really love to travel up north of Sweden, but uh, I never done it in the winter times because of the snow and the road condition and so on. So this is going to be a really nice experience for me also to, to come up here, so up north in the winter time. 
so it's going to be really hard work 12 days up in this winter landscape <laughs> oh how can you jogging in this climate I love it it's a tough people up here there's no Caesars living here I think it's like 25 degrees below zero Celsius now today it's really cold and uh, I don't know what's what's wrong with my hands but I never yeah of course I use gloves but I can manage really cold weather without gloves when it's cold like this it's very hard to speak <laughs> I'm talking in another language like English I'm now heading for the city center as I said and I'm going to look for a cup of coffee and I found a coffee shop on Google Maps it's called the Lady Svea's Cafe. So now I'm in the city center of Arvidsjaul. And look at this, what you say, exotic. They have a lot of Thai restaurants. It's many Thai ladies who come with their Swedish husband to to Sweden. Can you imagine for a Thai lady to come up this north of Sweden in this winter time? It's, I can't imagine what a big contrast it must be for them. So that's why we have so lot of Thai restaurants with Thai ladies who are starting up this Thai restaurant. It's not Swedish people who start this Thai restaurant. It's genuine Thai ladies. Oh, coming from this tropical country with 30 degrees in the shadow to come up to this winter landscape. Turn right. I think many of these ladies come here to to have a better future in some way. I don't know what is best to own a farm in Thailand and grow your own rice and maybe have a, some small shelter over your head but still you are alive or you move up here just to have a better lifestyle or what I don't I don't know I, I can't believe it it's it's unbelievable for me to understand it there we have it I really love to take a coffee, but when I, when I saw they have beer here, I couldn't resist to take one beer. So, cheers from Arvidsjaur. So that was Tant Svea's cafe, coffee shop. Haha, <laughs> they even have the liquor store here, the system belaget. One thing I realized when I uh, look at the map, how far away from the most south town of Sweden. It's 1,400 kilometers to the most south town from where I am now. <laughs> and uh, to the most north town of Sweden I think it could be like 700 kilometers and it's 1400 kilometers to the most south town so you get an opinion how 
a reference how big Sweden is and how far away up north I am. One of the most north liquor store system blogger in Sweden. Mountain. testing, testing. Oh la la la. What a baby. Hey, mitt vinterland. Nu är jag här. Fyra hundra meter slag. Jesus Christ. Det var väldigt brant parti där i tag. Fin utsikt över Arvidsjaur. Äntligen. Ah. Det var inte lättast att gå i en snöbacke upp för med en kabeltrumma. Jaha, jag bara att vandra ner igen då. Ända där uppifrån åkte jag med. Ja, filmare måste ju också ha lite mat. Mm. 
Ja, så är det ju en Är det rent kött? Gröst. Ja, tur att det är rent kött så att det inte är lortigt. Men gud vad gott alltså. Där får man bonusen så att filma. Men jag har då varit med mig ett jobb som tiden går så där fort. I socker. Och gud vad tiden går sakta där. Har du inte tänkt på det när du filmar det? Jag tycker i socker går otroligt sakta. Om det är en tråkig match så blir det hemskt lågt. Alltså är det en spännande match då gör det ju ingenting. In 1974, in Madonna di Campiglio, that was the year when Ingmar Stenmark changed the history in Swedish skiing, downhill skiing. That year was when he won the first World Cup victory of 86 World Cup victories. That's quite impressive, 86 World Cup victories. 
I remember when I was a little kid in the school, <laughs> the teacher went out of the classroom and come in with this big fat TV, these old ones. This was like in, yeah, in the late 1970s when Ingmar Stenmark was the biggest. And I have never been in such a quiet classroom like when Stenmark went downhill. <laughs> Everybody sit just still in the classroom and, and watch the race. It's like, it's like the whole Sweden was still, like the ambulance, the policemen, everybody watched Ingmar Stenmark when he did this race. It was a two minute race maybe, and the Sweden was still. It was quite impressive how, how big Ingmar Stenmark was in Sweden that these days. We didn't have so much sports to watch on TV. Ingmar Stenmark won also two Olympic gold medals, one bronze medal and five silver medals. And then we have the World Championship. Not the World Cup, the World Championship. The World Master. He won five gold, one silver and one bronze in that games also. And this 86 World Cup victories. So he has a digger list of medals. Here we have Tanabi Church. <laughs> and Tanabi has more big stars like Anya Persson, born in 1981. She won one Olympic gold, one Olympic silver and four Olympic bronze medals. And seven gold medals in the World Championship, one silver and three bronze medals. And she also has a lot of victories in the World Cup and that's 42 victories. That's really impressive also. And Jens Bygmark, Bengt Fjellberg and Stig Strand are also three big stars from Tanabe. That's so impressive that this small ski village has so many stars. Uh, I don't think we have any town or village that bring out so many ski stars, downhill ski stars. So we are here on uh, a job. We're going to broadcast downhill skiing event for uh, it's going to be four race days. Uh, two of the days is going to be in Anja Persson slope and two of the days is going to be in Ingmar Stenmark slopes. Yeah, I think also Stig Strand also has one slope named after him. And uh, Jens Bygmark and Bengt Fjellber also need to have one slope named after them, I think. It's going to be a one big honor for me to film in these slopes where these two stars was born. It's not just work for me to come here to Tanabe. It's so, for me, very big as a, a big sport nerd, like I am. And now I'm really close to the custom at the Swedish-Norwegian border. I need to go there <laughs> just to do it. And then I'm going to go back to the hotel and eat some lunch. So now it's so now it's going to be nice to go back to the hotel and eat some lunch. And then we're going to prepare for the events. What's that? Sister son? Yeah. Hey, Ingmar, your sister son? Yeah. No. Yeah. Sister son. Yeah. Uh, he uses for sure to walk on the ski. I can think of it. Oh, you are heavy. Yeah, you're in the middle of it. Ja. ja Men Ingmar var fyllan 65 i år då? Ja, 18 mars då fyllan. Ja. ja. Det var höj lekplats som deras. Han bodde, <laughs> tog jag alldeles sedan på Stadenbacken. Men då följde du när han liksom var barn då såg han växa upp och bli en stjärna då? Ja. Han var så förbannad att han inte fick vara först. Jaha. 
redan då. Ja. <laughs> 1974 vann de väl första världskuppsegen där va? Ja, det var väl Jag kommer ihåg, jag vet inte, lärarinnan i skolan tog ju in en stor tjock tv. Och så stannade lektionen upp för nu skulle Stenmark köra. Ja, det gjorde väl hela Sverige? Ja, hela Sverige stannade upp. Ja, ja. Och alla älskade Stenmark för han var ju aldrig stor på så Han var ju liksom sig själv ändå liksom. Han verkar ju vara det. Ja, tack, tack. That was really crazy to... Of a coincidence, just start to talk with a lady. And, uh, and she was uh, relative to Ingmar Stenmark. <laughs> That's really, really f incredible that I just started to talk to her. Maybe it's a very small village. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, she was a really nice lady to talk to. Oh, that was a happy moment. Now I'm in Ingmar's Backen's cop shop. You can see here behind me you have a lot of uh, picture of Ingmar Stenmark. Yesterday we have uh, the live broadcasting from Anja Backen, but now we are going to live bro broadcast on Saturday and Sunday in uh, Ingmar Backen, the Ingmar Slope, you can say. Anja Slope and Ingmar Slope. It's really, really nice here. They really dedicated this place to Ingmar Stenmark and I can't blame them. That's a cute small ice hockey rink here in Tärenabu. Now I'm out for a walk because I talked to a person here in Tärenabu who knows where Ingmar Stenmark's home is, not anymore, but the home he was born in, who he was raised in. He was living really, really close to the slope here. The slope is here and the house is over there somewhere. <laughs> so I can, I can imagine how he just walked up to the slope every free day he had to be as good he as he was becoming. Oh my god, thank you. Oh. A new cobble drag. Then I go to eat here now. And do I go? Men här kan vi säga Spectacular view Over Tjernaby And Ume Ägg Men det kommer att rumma Och vi ska ändå dit då Och här kommer Anna Persson åt en gång till It's like three plus degrees Celsius. Oops, it is it. A day like this in the downhill, waiting for the work in 30 minutes, I can't complain, the sun is warming my face. <laughs> I um, decided now to go up here in summertime, in about three months I'm going to go back, back here again and see how it is. In the summertime, it's going to be just amazing to come back so soon and see the difference between the winter and the summer up here in this really north of Sweden. I hope you like this uh, vlog from Arvidsjaur and Ternaby.